I was following this God that I thought I knew, but I didn't really know him. I just don't believe that I have to read a book to understand who the creator of the universe is. Stop looking for yourself and start looking for God. What got you so interested in the Bible? I mean, did you grow up going to church? Were you, uh, you know, the contestant on the Bible Bee? Were you the Awana uh, <laughs> Bible memory quiz gold star winner? I do love some Awana. I did grow up in church. My family was a big church three times a week, private Christian school. My family owned a Christian bookstore. So very early on, I was steeped in the word. But spoiler alert, I didn't value it that much. So that was um, one of the problems that I think a lot of us who've grown up in church have been challenged by is our lives have been saturated in this thing that we go, okay, I know that's true, but how does that impact me? Why should I care? So what was your aha moment? What, what, what caused you to sit, the lights to go on? Well, I, had, I went into full-time ministry right out of college, and I was in full-time ministry, and mostly like I was doing some speaking, some writing, things like that, and a pastor friend of mine pulled me aside after an event one night and said, um, Terry, Lee, have you read the whole Bible? And I said, I'm sure I've pieced it together over the years, you know, like all the church I just mentioned, selling Christian books, things like that. And he said, I think you should read the whole thing, read it in or the order that it happened, read it chronologically. So you get the storyline of what's happening. And he said, you can read the whole thing in 12 minutes a day. And Kirk, my first thought was, I don't want to. I've tried. It's confusing. Parts of it are boring. I don't understand how it applies to me. I want to just dwell in these parts that I know really well, that I feel like I understand the, the good parts and not have to deal with those confusing hard parts. I don't want to read the whole thing. But he offered to answer my questions along the way. And so I would about once a week, I would have two to three hours worth of questions that he started filling me in on things. I was reading things I'd never read, seeing things I'd never seen, understanding things I never understood. And like the, the hard part of the story is I got to the end of it the first time I read through and I didn't like God. I didn't like what I was seeing. And that was heartbreaking. I'm in full-time ministry. This is all I've ever known. And the hardest part was I knew it was true. Like I knew it was true. And so now this is who God really is. And I don't like him. What do I do about that? Uh. So I'm confessing all this to my pastor friend. And he says to me, okay, I have a new challenge for you. Read it again. And this time, stop looking for yourself and start looking for God. What does he love? What does he hate? What motivates him to do what he does? So I was reading through and halfway through the Old Testament, I, I fell in love with him. Like I just, it transformed everything to have this whole new lens to read scripture through. I had always been looking for myself in scripture. What are the promises? What are the things I can cling to to back God into a corner? How can I please God? How can I be a good Christian? Uh, and to read it, to understand who he is, that was my aha moment. Do you think it's uh, necessary for people to read the Bible in order to really understand who God really is? Because I know people who would say, I'm a spiritual person. I know people who would even say, well, I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus. I, I like a lot of the stuff that he said, but I just don't believe that I have to read a book to understand who the creator of the universe is. Here's maybe a really relatable example for you. You've done a lot of movies. You've done a lot of TV. You've done a lot of interviews. Suppose somebody came to you and said, um, man, I love Kirk Cameron. I, I love, I've seen, I've seen the shows he's been on. I've seen the movies he's been in. I love his work. Um, I have his book on my coffee table. I don't want to read his book. I don't want to have a conversation with him. Mm. But man, I have the, the posters on my wall. And these people who have want to experience God apart from the way that he has chosen to reveal himself to humanity. To me, it is making God in our own image mm. as opposed to seeing who God has told us that he is. And it's kind of, wouldn't that feel kind of insulting to you? Like you don't know the real me. <laughs> like don't, don't talk about who Kirk Cameron is. If you've only seen my movies, if you haven't had a conversation with me or read something that I've written, they don't really know who you actually are. So, Terry, Lee, why is it important to regularly approach the scriptures, regular Bible reading? Uh, I mean, why isn't it enough to say, well, I know the story. I get it. All right. I read Genesis. I understand the garden, the fall. We get through Moses and the Old Testament. Jesus comes. He solves the sin and the death problem. And heaven is at the finish line. Uh, I'm done. Been there. Done that. I know the message. Yeah, it's easy to think that way for sure. And I think I have been guilty of that at many times. And what I've 
realized is that's a pretty pragmatic, practical approach to something that is inherently relational. It is, okay, I have the information. That's all I need. Um, I have the directions to get where I'm going. Yeah. And it's not relational at all. And this is the God of the universe who has invited us into relationship with himself. And if we're like, yeah, yeah, just give me the directions. That's all I need. I need to know how to get to heaven. I need to know how to like not commit any of the embarrassing sins. And then my life is good. And most of our daily messaging is coming from the world, social media, other people around us that we may or may not get to choose who those people are. They might be the people that we work with. They might be the people in our family. And we're getting so much of our messaging Mm -hmm. about life from those people. But to go to the source of life, the author of life for life daily, for the daily bread, that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. It seems to us like your reading of the Bible and studying the Bible uh, uh, religiously, systematically, um, has really made a deep impact on you. Why are you devoting yourself toward helping other people to study the Bible, other people to really understand who God is? You know, I think because I spent so much of my life feeling like I was following this God that I thought I knew, but I didn't really know him. And once I turned the corner on that, after having read through the Bible that second time, once I turned the corner on that, I uncovered so much joy and peace and things that I had been trying to like cobble together over the years through my own means. And I found it in him. And so I know that there are so many people out there watching right now who they are struggling because they feel like there's a joy in Christianity that they can't quite access. Mm. They hear about this peace, but they don't feel it on the day to day. And you know what? I discovered how to get to it. And it's by trying to find God in his word. And it wasn't some new idea I invented. It was taught to me by someone who'd had it taught to them. And so I realized God has equipped equipped and gifted me to teach it to other people. And I can help people understand who God is uh, a little better than they did before, before today. And so I love doing that. It brings me so much joy to watch somebody whose story is like mine come alive when they read the word instead of just feel like it's dry. I, I love also, Tara Lee, that you talk about in your resources, that people should be looking for the God shot in the passages of scripture that they're reading. What does that mean? And and why is that important? Yeah. So when we were working on, I say we, I had a team of, uh, my board was helping me choose the resources to study for the Bible recap. And everybody's idea was that each day should end with an application point. What's your takeaway? What's your go and live this out, which is important. Scripture does call us to live out what we read. But my thought was, these people are taking on a big challenge to read through scripture, to try to be in the word every day, to try to understand it. And what I want to do is instead of give them an additional thing to do, I want to continue to prompt them and remind them to look for God and his character. Because instead of at the end of the day, being burdened by a to-do list, they're going to be buoyed by the character of God. Their hearts are going to be transformed and they're going to start to live out of that place where they start to live in response to the love that they have for him, as opposed to a checklist. It becomes relational. And so the God shot is just our fancy way of summarizing looking for God. What is the snapshot of God and his character from that day's reading? It is your who I beheld God to be. So that instead of, for instance, instead of you reading scripture and going, okay, I need to be more patient with my children. I need to be more patient with my children. And maybe you failing at that and then feeling the next day like, oh, I really dropped the ball. I don't want to read the Bible again today because I didn't even do what I'd learned yesterday. You leave going, God has been so patient with me. God demonstrates his patience towards sinners like me. He's so long suffering. And when we begin to worship those praiseworthy attributes about God that we find in the God shot, that little snapshot, our hearts begin to be transformed by the work of the Holy Spirit who has made us aware of that, helped us see it in in the word that he's written and ignites our hearts to be more like him, to be conformed to the image of his son. I love that. I love that. That's a, that's a different way of reading the scriptures. And you're making me think about passages in my mind right now. Uh, you read the story of Joseph and you see him being betrayed by his brothers and thrown into a pit and sold into slavery and all these things. Wow, how would I handle that if I, that were me and I was in the pit and I was in the prison or I was Daniel and I was trying to... And then you go, wait a minute, where's God in all of this? And then I go, wait a minute... God was providentially working behind the scenes and gets Joseph set up to where he's second in command and he saves the whole world. And he is there, you go, wait a minute. And if, and if I can then just live 
out of that place of knowing that I am in a relationship with that kind of a God, that he is maybe behind the scenes working out all these details of my life so that maybe the pit that I'm in, the difficulty I'm experiencing is really all gonna work out in a later chapter in this book of my life. And I can go through this with joy now. <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it, Kirk. Good, good work. Um, this is your, your first test and you passed. But um, the, the idea of learning the character of God so that we don't have to kind of muster up our own patience, exactly what you just said. You don't have to muster up your own obedience. You get to lean into who God says he is and know that his spirit dwells in you to be able to access those things and that trust and that hope in the greater story. Boy, that's so, that's so important. Um, right now, I've got a, a young man who is uh, in our family who is going through some chemotherapy treatments and radiation treatments. And so often we wanna just say, what's the right prayer? What's the right verse to send? What's the right, and go, wait a minute, what if I just need to remember who the real God is? Mm -hmm. What if I go through the Proverbs and the Psalms and it just reminds me where my refuge is and I just lean on that God of faithfulness, the great healer? Uh, maybe maybe that's where we need to go rather than just, like you say, a to-do list of uh, the right kind of prayer by looking in the index section uh, at the back of some Bible. I love that. It seems right. very organic and yeah. the right way to read through the Bible. It's been transformative for me. And again, by no means do I want to diminish obeying God's word and doing what God says. There is joy in that even mm. when our hearts aren't inclined toward it. Even when we don't want to obey, it's important that we do. There is joy and fruit just in the obedience, even if all I learn is discipline. But to do it from a heart that's transformed out of love, you know, if you go home and you wash the dishes because you have to versus washing the dishes because, man, you love your wife and it just makes her so happy, those are different experiences. Tara Lee, you often say, he is where the joy is. What, what do you mean by that? So in Psalm 1611, David is writing and he is talking about God. And he says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Fullness of joy forevermore. I, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Sign me up. Where do I get that? And David says, and David, who has everything. David owns palaces, so many women all the money, all of the feasts. And he says, it's not in those things. Fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore, those are found in God. And so I am, I'm on a treasure hunt every day to find God in scripture because he's where the joy is. And that's how we end every day of the Bible recap, whether you do the podcast or the YouTube channel or the book, that's how we end every day. He's where the joy is.